Hello, and welcome to episode 45 of Design Curious Podcast. I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. Today on the podcast, I'll be talking to you about how to get your portfolio started if you're just starting out in the career and you don't have one already. So there's a few tips and tricks you can learn in today's episode. And as I mentioned in the episode, you'll find that a portfolio review is one of the things that I offer in my design mentor. So if that's something that you're looking for a professional to review your portfolio, then go ahead and click on the links to join my design mentor today and get started on the right path to your career. All right, let's get into the episode. You're now listening to Design Curious, a place where you, creative one, are here to learn about what it really is like to be an interior designer. And I'm your host and mentor, Rebecca Ward. If you're worried about how to succeed in a creative career, if you're ready to learn your next steps to become an interior designer, and if you want the satisfaction of doing something you love every day, you are in the right place. Grab a coffee, a notebook, and let's dig into today's episode. So when you're starting out as an interior designer, one of the most challenging things is to develop a portfolio that you are proud of and that you can show off to your clients and get them to hire you. (laughs) There's a couple avenues to this. So if you're coming out of school, um, you will definitely have some projects that you worked on in school that are going to look decent enough that you can put them in your portfolio because of the... 3D rendering that you do that look fairly photorealistic, those are great for showing what your capability is of developing a design and finding design solutions. So if you haven't gone to school and you're coming into the career from maybe another career, one of the other avenues you can take is to start taking those classes in CAD drafting and 3D rendering so that you can develop those types of projects of floor plans and some renderings of some interior spaces so that you can have something to show people. Aside from that, though, the other thing you can do is use your own home as a template for creating vignettes and scenarios and redesigns. You don't have to do a whole kitchen remodel because that is as we know, quite expensive, (laughs) but you can decorate the house and make changes that could possibly be like having a design client. And sometimes you can do it for friends or family and have them volunteer their homes that you can, maybe they'll give you a $5,000 budget and you can go and redecorate their living room or refresh their kitchen or something like that. So there's always an option out there that you can take. I will tell you that when you are working on your own home or even maybe the home that you grew up in, it's really challenging to see past what is already existing because you're very familiar with the space and things are where they've always been and that's just the way it is. And so you you don't necessarily pick up on all the different things that could be changed or could be developed because it is something that you see all the time. One time a few years ago when I was working on that pilot for HGTV, We used my parents' home as an example of a client's house just to give a scenario for the pilot. And it was really interesting to think about it from the perspective of a designer who doesn't know the house coming in there and saying like, oh, this kitchen is really dated. It needs to be updated. And here we take a wall out here and we'd change these finishes and add a window or something, you know, and coming to it from that perspective I was actually able to see it. But otherwise, when I go into the house that I grew up in, it was so familiar to me. It was like, this is just the way it is, <laughs> you know? And like, I was able to help my parents update it over the years, but I definitely wasn't seeing major changes that were obvious that need to happen. But I guess one way to get around that mindset is to think like, okay, you're going to be entertaining 50 interior designers that are seasoned and are going to come over to your house and they're going to, because of their natural tendencies, look at your house and 
see the areas that might need improvement. So walk in the front door and look at your house from that angle and see like, oh, maybe I can rearrange this furniture to open up the traffic flow or different things like that. And then document it and take some great photography. I mean, even iPhones nowadays can take such great photos um, if that's all you can do. Or you can even hire a professional to take photos of your home. And the better the photography, the better it sells to a client or to a prospective employer. So it is worth paying for a professional to do it. Now you want to have a professional who has the eye for editorial photos and not real estate photos. Real estate photos are entirely different ball game because they use a lot of wide angle. They're trying to make the space look bright and spacious. But with editorial photos, they want it to be realistic. They are coming from a lower eye level. They'll, they'll drop the camera lower. They usually have no lights on when they're taking photos because they only want the natural light to come through and they take it with several different shutter speeds and then overlay it. And so it really gives a professional and full depth photo. And I say it's 100% worth the investment to get professional photos if you have a space that is worth documenting. The other thing you're going to want to include with your portfolio is a brief scenario of the project that you're showing. So as an employer or as someone who works with interns a lot, I look through student portfolios a lot and you know, it's nice to see their projects. And if they're coming from the same school over the years, I see the same projects again and again. And so I kind of know what the scenario is, what their teacher had them do. But it'd be great to have a blurb there to see like, well, what was the obstacle here? Or what was the challenge that you had with this project? Or what was the thing that you actually did to the space? Because Perhaps all the walls and the paint color and the flooring was there and you just added the furniture or the furniture was existing and then you changed the walls and the artwork and the flooring. And so being able to know what part of it your hands were on and what kind of change that you made to this space really tells a future employer or a client what kind of talent that you have. And so you're trying to use a picture to capture your experience, your talent, so that you can repeat it into their project. Another way to develop your portfolio if you're starting now and if you have worked for someone else would be to ask your employer if you can feature any of the photos of the projects that you worked on with that employer while you were working there. So normally, if your employer allows this to be used as promotion for you, even though it was done under their supervision and under their firm, you will have to give credit for that original firm's work. And then you can say that this was a project that you worked on as a junior designer while working for Rebecca Ward Design. So that people looking at that photo know that that's not actually fully your work, but that you are a part of it. And that full credit goes to the original firm. And that's just one way to bolster your portfolio if you don't have a lot starting out. And if you have an employer who's very supportive, then they will, you know, usually let you do this. Sometimes they will not, though, because they're using those images for their own promotion as well for their own clients. And there'd be a conflict if it's in both places at the same time, sometimes. So there's another avenue you can approach. You've been working for someone else and you're going out on your own. But it is a delicate matter and don't always expect that person to say yes because those photos actually belong to the original design firm. Bottom line, I'd say if nothing else and you have a lot of time on your hands, yet not a lot of projects, then dabble around with the 3D renderings because I think those are really where you can be fully creative. You're not actually working with a literal budget so that you can kind of do some fanciful designs if you want to, if you want to do a whole bunch of contemporary designs or you want to do a bunch of farmhouse designs and kind of build a portfolio that is in the style of the projects that you're hoping to work on or one that you're really good at working within. So that would probably be where I would spend some time working on my portfolio if I were starting out nowadays. Whereas when I was starting out, we kind of did a lot of hand rendering, (laughs) which does not come across as professional, I think, as the, the photorealistic 3D renderings nowadays. So that is an advantage of starting out now. 
One of the things that I offer in my design mentor is a portfolio review for people in this situation. So I can look over your portfolio and tell you which projects look good and what what projects I want to get more information about and what would be the best pieces to put your best foot forward to show on your website or even just in a document that you can send out to people who are interested in your services or even a prospective employer because you'll need some kind of portfolio as well to show a prospective employer that you have some design experience and that you have the ability to put designs together. Yeah, so besides the resume, which I also offer reviews for in My Design Mentor, The portfolio is going to be your next tool to show the employer what you're capable of or prospective client. You can use all of these things from your portfolio on your website that you create, as well as in a presentation that you might show to a prospective employer or client. So those are the tips and tricks for a portfolio. A picture is worth a thousand words, so you want to get your pictures looking good. and. It might take a little extra hard work, a little extra prep and time, but it is definitely worth it to have a portfolio you can present. Oh, and one last tip I would say, also include a photo of yourself, maybe in the space or doing some design work. I think that's really important that the client or the employer can see what kind of vibes you send through your photography (laughs) in the photo of you. So yeah, include a photo of yourself in your resume too. So those are my few tips on trying to develop your portfolio. It is important to have. And but then again, we also remember there's so much more that goes into a client hiring you or an employer hiring you besides your portfolio. This is just a piece of the puzzle. So you want to make sure it's polished, it looks great, that it answers all the questions, but it's just a part of what your offering is because it's more than just what the designs you produce. It's how you produce them and how you work with clients and your personality and everything like that all comes together in the decision to hire you. So a few quick tips to getting your portfolio started. And don't forget that if you're looking for more help with how to get started in the career, you can join My Design Mentor today and get one-on-one feedback from me and other students in the group to help develop your skills, to make you marketable to a future employer, or even for going out on your own and getting your own clients. You will also want to download the three things I wish I had known when I started my career in interior design and the roadmap to interior design. So if you want either of those, you can find them in the show notes or on the website podcast page. And stay tuned for next week. We have in our summer series, three consecutive interviews over the next three weeks that you're just going to love. So stay tuned. And until then, stay creative. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode, please leave a rating and a review. This helps me reach other curious creatives like you. If you have a topic request or would like to contact me, simply head over to my website, rwarddesign.com or email me at podcast at rwarddesign.com.